Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Politics YouTube channel, directly supported the Grumman Politics Association. And today we're in the middle of a electro electronic ignition system install, the EIS 61000 on a six-cylinder Continental and a Cessna 182Q. Now, the first thing that we did was we came along and we removed all the bottom spark plugs and we removed all the harnesses from the spark plug harness. Pulled them all out together. The bottom plugs are going to be driven by the EIS and we're routing the one remaining mag and we chose the newest of the two mags to drive all the top plugs on the engine. So we'll be driving all the top spark plugs with this new magneto. They're both impulse coupled so it doesn't matter. But the older one will be coming off. So we've gathered all the harnesses together in anticipation of removing this mag and putting the mag timing head in place. <clears throat> Once the mag timing head is in place in time to the engine, then we'll come back along and we will um, install the spark plugs and then mount the coil pack down here on the motor mount and then we'll begin the process of running all the lines to all the spark plugs. So stay tuned for some more fun, but this is how the um, EIS install normally goes. Stand by. Okay, so we've got the old mag out and all the harnesses that go with it. We've now put the engine at zero degrees, top dead center, cylinder number one. And now we're gonna be installing the mag timing head. Now it's important that these mags go in at zero degrees because the electronic controller determines when they fire um, at zero degrees, 12 degrees, 24 degrees, and then advances under power up at altitude. So the controller needs a reference point. That's what we give it at zero degrees. And now we're gonna go ahead and install the mag timing head. Stand by, we'll be back after we get that in place. Since we're putting this in an 0470 uniform engine, Continental, we want to make sure we pin it on the counterclockwise rotation, not the clockwise. So now that we have the proper pin in the proper hole, now we're ready to grab a new gasket and put it into place. Stand by for a bit more fun. Okay, so here's the mag timing head and our mag timing housing, and it's in place. We did have to pull the uh, idler gear out of the engine and rotate it by about 40 degrees to get the unit to set into place comfortably. But now that it's all in place, the thing is timed at zero degrees top dead center and we're now ready to move on to the next step, putting in the spark plugs and getting all the leads run from the coil pack. So stand by for a bit more fun on our part. Okay, so now we've got the ignition harnesses run. The dual impulse coupled mag that's on the right side of the engine will now be firing all the top plugs. We've got all the cover plates back in place. We will be blocking this hole. We're using the other one for the output of the mag timing head. We'll be using that to bring the wire right out through here. And uh, these spark plugs are all back in place and all secured down. This one's a little loose, we'll fix that. But uh, anyway, so that's got the mag timing head and all the wires run. Now we're in the matter of measuring out the motor, uh, the coil pack, which is gonna get mounted down here. So stand by. Okay, so we're in the process of the coil pack. And because this is a Continental, these towers are labeled differently. So the A towers fire one and two, the B towers file, fire five and six, and the Charlie towers fire three and four. And that's the way we're gonna go ahead and be installing it. So we're gonna go ahead and mount it to the heat sink mounting plate, and then we'll be ready to fix it to the engine. Stand by. Okay, so here's the coil pack held in by um, two Adele clamps, a 13 and a 15. It's nice and solid on the motor mount. It's low down in the engine compartment, so it'll be cool. Uh, exhausting air out the bottom, heat from the engine up on the top. So this should be a good location for it. Now we're gonna start, uh, we've just installed all six spark plugs, torqued them uh, with anti seize Now we're gonna be running all the lines for cylinder one and two, five and six, three and four. We'll be running those for the spark plug, so stand by. All right, so now we're having fun with the ignition leads. And so the first thing we do is we take an ignition lead and we cut it to length uh, for the length that we're gonna be using. And then before we do anything else, we slide the ferrule on top. That way we don't forget it. Don't ask us how we know that one. <clears throat> And then we cut a little bitty piece off of the wire, exposing the center uh, graphite and the center wire. And then what we do is we come back with a pair of pliers, dikes, and we just put a couple of little grooves 
or notches into the rubber. That's just to give us a slope to run up on. Then we take the bee nut, we put a little drop of oil and roll the oil all the way around and now we can start feeding the nut on. Now you only get so far and then you have to turn around and grab a new pair of safety wire pliers to be able to pull it all the way through. Now we have a special vise over here. We're going to go use the vise real quick. Okay, as you can see now, we've got it all the way exposed. So then we want to do is we want to come back and we want to cut off our little notches. So we get back to a nice flush cut front. That piece just comes right off. And then we take the rest of the wire that's left, including the shield. We cut it off. Don't need it. Whoa, nothing like dropping a razor blade. Oh. Okay, then we come back and we want to see how much wire we have to leave hanging out. So we first thing we do is we push this in on the outside and you'll know you've done it right when you can feel click, 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 click. Everywhere it goes down, it's hitting the wire wrap. So we know we've done it good. Then we want to check it into the bottom of the plug and we have a good cushion. And now we can come back and put the rubber gasket seal on we just run it up to the barrel sorry, to the ferrule that's all done and we check it one more time to make sure we have a little bit of cushion so when we tighten on the plug we're done and that's how you do the wires on an electroware just making sure you trim off any of these little wires because we don't want anything working so there's one end done it's now ready to be installed on the number uh, four cylinder and that takes care of how these are made up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the one for the number two cylinder, and then I'll go install these on the airplane and come back for the final two. So stand by. And as you can see, we now have all the wires dressed into place. We bought these spacers, they're from Jex Performance Parts. They're for eight millimeter spark plug wires, and they give us more than double the, half, the quarter inch gap that the Electro Air Systems wants between the spark plug wires for an arcing. So these come in very handy. They're about um, eight or nine dollars for a pack of 16. Real easy to install and pop out. <clears throat> and so for the 50 cents a piece, they're well worth it for dressing up your spark plug wires. So now that we have the spark plugs in, the harness done, the mag done, and the coil pack done, now we're time, now we're ready to pierce the firewall on the other side. And I think we're gonna end up piercing the firewall somewhere right here we're going to go inside and make one final check to make sure there's nothing up in this area that's going to be a problem for us but we're going to check it real quick before we actually drill so stand by for some more fun okay so now that we have all the spark plug wires done we've now um, wired in the mag timing head to harness we've sent the power and the control wire over to the coil pack We've pierced the firewall and sealed it up. And while we were here, we sealed up a couple of other spots that were leaking air on the engine to help it run cool. And now we're in the process of getting ready to finish up the inside, which is mounting the coil pack and running electricity. And let's take a real quick look at the um, switch panel. So here we have the switch panel. This is the Electroware EA13000. It's a mag on one side, EIS on the other, and a push to start. You start on both. We also have the two breakers, the two amp for the controller, the 10 amp for the coil pack. We'll be wiring those in tomorrow. And that will pretty much, with tapping into the manifold pressure, we'll get this installation done so it can be pulled out and uh, test fired. So stand by for a bit more fun. Well, here we are back. Um, we've put in the EIS switch panel and we've wired in the breakers. We've done operational systems checks. Everything in the airplane is working as it's supposed to, including the new electronic ignition. As you can see over here, we've completely removed the ignition switch and put in a rubber plug. That ignition switch is now in here, along with some other parts that they wanted to keep. And finally, we have all the paperwork and the 337 for them to use in flying the airplane. So this completes another installation of um, EIS, first one we've done in a Cessna, but it operates just like normal. So we hope you found this useful, and thanks for watching. And in this case, have a good day flying the Cessna. Thanks for watching.